Hello everyone and welcome to my Young and Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today's Young and the Restless recap airs in the United States on Thursday, October 17, 2024, and one day earlier in Canada. We provide Y and R recaps every every day. Jack and Diane have a difficult conversation while they work away from Jabbit. Jack inquires if she received the note from accounting. Diane reacts solely with mumbled murmurs of assent. Jack wonders if it will pain her to look at him. Diane sees and wonders whether that's better for him. Diane wonders how Jack can sit there answering emails without taking legal action against their son, or better still, having him arrested for business theft. Victoria, Cole, and Claire are seated on the opposite side of the cafe. Claire claims Jack and Diane had been sitting there for 20 minutes, scarcely speaking to one other. Victoria glances through the doors and comments they do not appear pleased. Claire informs her parents that Kyle has not made things any better. She claims he has been lovely to her, but at work he may be aggressive and nasty. She describes the scenario as tragic because they all still love each other. Victor and Kyle sit in the lounge. Kyle inquires whether he has seen the press release about Glissade. Victor has, and he is satisfied. Kyle believes that since Audra's departure, Glissade has taken off significantly. Victor cautions Kyle that the method by which they received this miraculous substance will make things sticky. He insists a deck will not let this go. Summer watches nervously as Chance enters. She wants to know whether he uncovered any clues as to what happened to Heather. Chance can't lie and tells her he discovered some alarming evidence and things aren't looking good for Daniel right now. He tells her confidential information. Summer agrees and is concerned. She doesn't understand why Daniel is in difficulty. Chance claims he's only following the evidence, but it's too early to say for sure. Summer believes Daniel would never injure Heather. Chance wonders if Lucy may have hidden something damning out of fear. Summer dismisses the proposal as soon as he suggests it. Chance wonders how the evidence might have gotten there. Summer can't respond since she doesn't know what the proof is. She wonders whether he is implying that Daniel planted it himself. The theory does not make sense to her. Chance advises she talk to her brother and let him explain. Phyllis meets Daniel at the Overlook. She received his SMS and wants to know what is happening. Daniel informs her that they must depart the flat to conduct a forensic search. Phyllis says that sounds serious. Daniel agrees. He booked lodgings for him and Lucy at the athletic club. He claims he's losing his mind since nothing makes sense anymore. Daniel tells Phyllis about Heather's phone. She is astounded when he tells her about the bloody towels. Phyllis would like to know how much blood is bloody. Daniel claimed it made him ill to his stomach. According to Phyllis, someone must have put them there. Daniel wonders who would do that to them. He is starting to wonder if Heather has a boyfriend. Phyllis informs him that this is not true and encourages him not to go there. It doesn't make sense. Daniel answers that this isn't the only thing that doesn't make sense. Heather's phone's passcode has changed. When they eventually got into the phone, Chance discovered a text message to Paul that had not been sent. Phyllis wants to know what was said. Daniel reminds her that it was all falsehoods and ridiculous stuff Heather would never say. The message informed Paul that she was terrified of Daniel since they had been arguing. Phyllis is in amazement. Daniel states that he is in another reality. Phyllis isn't sure what's going on, but she believes something is really wrong. Cole wonders if Jack and Diane have been going to Claire about their troubles. Claire claims they haven't actually hear things around she the house, can't. and they've talked. Cole believes they are unloading on her. Claire wouldn't phrase it that way since she had asked. Victoria wonders who she asked. Claire stated that she questioned Jack since she was there this morning, and he glanced down. She gave support in whatever way she could. Victoria recognizes how much she likes Kyle and wants to assist Jack and Diane, but she believes Cole is correct that Claire should not be embroiled in the Abbott family conflict. 
Claire thinks it's difficult when she's present, and it occurs right in front of her. Cole believes she has to make her impartial position known and understood. Inside, Jack and Diane continue. Jack cannot believe that is her solution to the problem. Diane said that is what one usually does with thieves. Jack says he is not a thief, but rather their son. Diane maintains that he is now both. Jack claims he has spoken with the attorneys, and they must have more than a hunch. Diane claims that the fact that Glissade offers a similar product is proof. Jack stresses that they won't know if it's an identical match until it's tested. He'd like to believe Kyle is intelligent enough to have his chemist tweak things to mask his traces. Diane refuses to let Kyle get away with this. All she sees is Jack dragging his feet. She encourages Jack accept the truth that his relationship with Kyle is finished. The sooner he understands this, the better off he will be. Jack and Diane's conflict worsens. He can't believe she's ready to write their son off. Jack claims to know who is tugging the strings. Diane claims that even if Victor is, Kyle is not entirely responsible. Kyle has been on a one-man campaign to repay them for not giving him what he wants. She's had enough of tiptoeing around Kyle and asks that he accept responsibility for his actions. Jack wants to know what the heck happened to her. She claimed to have awakened up to reality. Diane walks away implying that they would be better off if they did not converse. Cole, Victoria, and Claire observe, while Jack notices and departs. Victoria claims it went ugly quickly, which is unusual for Jack because he is generally extremely discreet. Cole wants Claire to remember what he has said. Claire claims that her impulse is to help. Cole informs her that he used to give Victoria unwanted advice on how to cope with Victor. Her parents believe Claire should let the Abbots handle their difficulties. Claire agrees, but finds it amusing that they brought up Victor, who plays a role in all of this. Victoria wonders what he has done now. Kyle assures Victor that he is grounded and that he made the correct decision in placing him in charge of Glissade. Victor is pleased with his effort. Kyle claims he has covered all areas and that Jabot will not identify their merchandise as stolen. Victor says he'll cover the repercussions, but Jack and Diane won't take it lying down. Phyllis is concerned about Daniel and wants him to eat something, but he is not hungry. Daniel can't think about anything except the craziness he's drowning in right now. He mentions the phone, bloody towels, and Sharon's statement that Heather was unhappy with him. Phyllis stops him in his tracks and asks what he means by Sharon. Daniel assumed he had told her about this. Phyllis swiftly informs him he didn't. Phyllis tosses her coat on the park bench, wondering how Sharon became involved in all of this. Daniel tells her that Chance stated Sharon went by to apologize and notify Heather about their dispute. Phyllis responds, Our little friend Sharon, who hasn't been the model of stability lately, seems to be very clear on this. She has no idea what is going on in her thoughts but she does not trust it. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't miss any updates.